time. Hello everybody. A lot of videos out there. How to repot a twinkle. Oncidium twinkle white fantasy is starting new growth. So that's why I'm out here in the beautiful late afternoon sun going to repot this twinkle and put it on film because as many twinkles as have been repotted in the past I have yet to do one so it's in this nasty nasty stuff there's some sphagnum in the middle here the reason I'm repotting it right now is before it gets any hotter I need it to get established for one less stress and secondly more importantly there are signs of new growth right there and there's one in the middle coming up in there and it's actually two plants which it's not going to I'm not going to let it be two plants I don't want this to split and separate so I'm going to be well, if it separates, you know what? Big deal. It's going in the same pot. So I'm not expecting any new roots at this point in time. The new growths are way too small. There's no, there's no reason to be so expectant of new roots. But I do not want to wait until it gets much hotter. This little pseudobulb here is shriveling of its own. There's a new growth coming in there, but it looks like it's going to fail. See, it's a little bit nasty there on the, on the top. So maybe, maybe it'll shoot out another one on the side here. I don't know. Let me get this fresh water out of the way. But yeah, it's going to get too hot. So if I'm going to lose it, I'm going to lose it because I'm taking it apart now. But I would lose it anyway, even if I don't do anything. Funny how the White Fantasy is uh, very reluctant to actually develop anything. My Red Fantasy and my Cinnamon are no problem whatsoever and these little guys snails snails and now there's two and there's another snail in there oh boy maybe I left it too late because I didn't see any snails before I've been watching this closely but maybe I left it too late oh dear the other ones that I've already repotted the red fantasy and the cinnamon they're doing fantastic so this one's gonna get one heck of a dose of hydrogen peroxide like seriously Yeah, this little guy, if he makes it, deserves a place in my collection. When I repotted Red Fantasy and Cinnamon, uh, I did not actually have any snails in their pots. So I just assumed, and also because I didn't see any signs of snails, I just assumed the same would apply to this one because they were bought at the same time same batch but you see there are no guarantees right so hydrogen peroxide it is Ick. I think everything in life has a purpose snails there's a reason for their existence 
but please not in my orchids. Not here, not now. That's fizzing nicely, despite the fact that the roots were a bit damp. Okay, there's a few more little growth coming there. That's great. I'm going to have to move this from its location because it looks like there's water dripping on them and that is making it abort its new growth. They are not coming through strong enough. Yeah, there's water dripping on these where they live. Honestly, I thought in the heat, in the heat, I would have absolutely no problem because everything dries out so fast. But nope, that is not the case. You see how liberal I am with the hydrogen peroxide. And I just dunked it in water before and it will do its job. Now I'm not very confident about this piece at all. You can see the bottom of the pseudobulb there. It's dark. The bottom of this pseudobulb is dark. I'm thinking of taking them off, but I'm going to wait because I have a very good piece right here. It might be small, but it's okay. This one's okay. These might not, this one, this piece might not make it. Simply because there's two bulbs. If I take them off, the whole thing falls apart. Then I have skinny little things. I don't know. I'm going to leave them on. And then we'll see how this little piece progresses. It looks a bit weak to me, to be honest. I don't feel too confident about it. And there go the animals because Siliano wants out of his cage. So microfiber into the pot. I'm using two because these little guys like their moisture. They like to drink a lot. They're fast growers. And for that reason, I'm going to put two microfibers in this setup. If it's something like a Cattleya, I don't use two microfibers. I use one because they are not, yes, they like their water, but they also like a little bit of a drier environment. So let's see if you can hear my dog barking. He's fine. He knows, he knows where I am and I'll be with him shortly because this is not going to take long at all. If I'm getting stressed out because I want to attend to him, I will stop the video. He knows how to come around to this side. He knows. So let's see, let's get these a little bit higher because I want to put some lecker underneath that loop. All right. It's a competition. Just getting some lacquer off camera here. Sorry about the noise. There's not much more to this. Now, normally you would place your orchid in the back based on where the growths are growing so that you can give the new growths room to progress into the pot. But in this case, with regards to the twinkles, they are prone to growing all around. So I'm just going to place them in the middle. There's one. And there's two. Let's see. 
I'm just going to place them in the middle and then we'll figure out which piece lives and put our judgment. If we need to correct anything, we can always correct at a later stage. That's another beauty of the LECA setup. Once roots are established, when you then want to change something, it is no biggie to go in there and do it again and improve on the setup because being inorganic, it doesn't bother anything. The roots won't be affected, the ones that are growing, they won't be affected. And you can easily just switch it up a little bit and make it more efficient. Give it a little bit of a tap. Let everything settle down. You can see I planted it a bit lower than normal. Because what I'm going to do is pull up the orchid to its proper height and level that I would like. And based on that, it should sit proud of the LECA. Now in my environment, I do have a top layer that is dry. So I'm not too concerned about burying pseudobulbs. If you are in a very humid environment and you're doing this with LECA, then I would advise to be a little bit more cautious where you place the orchid in the media. It should sit prouder so that the bases don't get inundated. Now the piece that is not looking so well at the base, I'm just going to tug it a little bit more, raise it up a bit more. But normally it shouldn't matter where the pseudobulbs are laying if you have a dry environment. See these lecas pieces that are a little bit bigger. I take them out because they serve no purpose. They are a bit too clunky and I will find smaller ones. All right. These little kernels will fill in the gap nicely, but still maintain some kind of air. For anybody who's new to my channel, thank you so much for joining. It seems like a little bit of a different circumstance than you might be used to. I have a very, very old dog, and sometimes he forgets where he is and what he's doing and why he's barking, and it just becomes a moment, as I call it. He is not well, and I think he's losing a little bit of his sense of um, orientation. And um, with that, also memory. I don't want to say dementia because it's a tough subject for me. But yeah, let's just look at it, take it from that. He's, he's not, he doesn't remember that now it's time to stop barking, but he is absolutely fine, I promise. So the last thing that needs to be done here well, two more things. First, the label goes in. And then, some water in the reservoir. And a quick flush through. This is not fertilized water. Not for now, because I used hydrogen peroxide. I don't want to use fertilizer when I have orchids that had been in contact with hydrogen peroxide while the roots are healing, so to speak. If there were any roots in there that were viable enough, we'll have to wait and see. There's no reason chopping off any kind of roots. In my opinion, they actually serve a purpose for anchoring. There shouldn't be wobbly in the pot. And these old roots, if they decompose with all the flushing, the debris will fall through eventually. I'm not too concerned. But in this case, these old roots, they might still function, but they will help me with the anchoring. And now we just wait and hope for the best. And let's see if this one grows or goes on to other realms of orchids. Thank you very much for watching. I know there's a lot of Twinkle videos out there. I appreciate that you also watched mine.
uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye.